Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on formatting OS map data within Rhino. We're going to be looking at how to take data downloaded from Digimaps or OpenStreetMaps and format it so we can correctly line weight it and set it up onto sheets within Rhino. Now this video follows on from my previous video on how to import OS map data and 3D model data from Digimaps into Rhino 3D. And we're going to be looking at working with this 2D OS map data here and how to start to kind of add line weights to it, change the hatches and format it in a way that we can correctly use it on our layout sheets. Um, now we're mostly going to be focusing on the 2D line drawing data here and not 3D model data. So I'm just going to start by hiding my buildings layer from the top there. Now I've set up a series of 2D line work layers here. And if you haven't already watched it, please go back and watch the video on line weighting in Rhino, which I've set up before. This goes through each of these particular line weight styles and how to set those up and why I've kind of set those at the thickness they are. And we're going to be using that template to then set the line weights in this file here. Now, when you bring in OS map data from Digimaps, you'll see that you get this series of layers here, which is really useful that it's split up each of the line types into different layers. The one thing about this is you can almost get sort of too much information from this as kind of series of lines that you might never really use. So the first thing I usually do is just start by hiding off all the layers and we're going to open up the ones we need so we can start to use those. So I'm just going to select all these layers and we're just going to hide them so we've got nothing there. Now some useful ones to have are the building areas which is the sort of a hatch that denotes the footprint of the buildings and this might come in handy later if we want to start hatching up our plans. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to select those, go to properties and we're going to put them on to my hatch layer. We're going to go hatch knit there. Um, and another important stage in this process, when you change the layer of these objects, you also want to change the display color. By default, they'll be set to a color done by the kind of previous user or whoever made these particular line work in whatever file they made it in. Um, you want to make sure this is by layer. This way, when we start to set up hatches for each particular layer, the color will correspond to the layer you've set it to and not by some default color that the objects had been made to previously. It's important that the line type and print color also are by layer as well, so it's really good to check that when you're setting it up, just in case any of these aren't or are set to a specific line thickness or color. So just make sure that all of those are set to by layer when doing this. And you'll see it will go to the color of whatever layer you've put it on, which is the hatch in this case. Um, once you do that, I'm going to just hide that so you can't see it anymore. Um, you may want as well, there's road area, roadside area to structure area, paths as well. So there's lots of kind of different hatches which might be useful to you. Um, for this particular one, I'm going to take the road and roadside area, but I'm going to leave the rest of these off. And we're going to just select these and we're going to put these in our second hatch folder, our hatch fin, which is a slightly lighter hatch, which we might use for something which we just want to kind of give a different hatch thickness to compared to our kind of main buildings in this instance. So same again, properties, make sure it's on my hatch fin layer and make sure it's by layer. And that's fine. And then we'll just go off and we're going to hide that, lock it and hide it. Um, you can see now that we've got that set up like so. So we've got our roads and we've got our buildings split there. Um, the rest of these areas, and I'll just kind of open them up and go through them. You might find useful, we've got some paths here. I might actually and there's general surface as well and we can kind of have a look and see where these compare to the rest of my objects what i might do for these is actually let's take we're going to take the general surface and path and we'll see if we've got any more that are useful just because we want to kind of have i want to sort of set up a roads path and kind of general surfaces and buildings layer so there's just two colors of hatches that are kind of correspond to one another um, a lot of these like water courses and other things might be useful if you're near a river, say, so you might want some different hatch for the water. Um, for now, I'm going to leave those off because they're not that useful for this. But this is a good way of just sort of splitting up different parts of your plan. So you've got vegetation, multi-surface, different landforms. 
So I think for these, let's just select all of those as well and we'll put those on our hatch fin layer too. Um, by all means as well, you can make multiple versions of these hatch layers. So inside the hatch fin, you might have you might want to split them up by different path types as well, seeing as you have it already layered up for you. Um, for this, I'm trying to keep it quite simple, but if you want to kind of add that level of detail, that's a good way of doing it as well, especially if you want to sort of start to analyze these particular diagrams based upon the land use. And this is a really good way of splitting it up, which Digimap does for you automatically. So for now though, I'm just gonna put that into my hatch fin. Oops. And just in there, I've realized I've locked it as well. Make sure that those are set by layer two. There we go. So those are kind of the most majority of the areas that I wanted to set up. The next part we're gonna go down to is our sort of line types and the main one of these is this building divisions line and building outline and you'll see this is showing the outline of my buildings on my plan and also the kind of building divisions is the parts in between the building that might split up different plots within those larger building masses so the building outline this first one we want to be the kind of thicker line on my drawing so i'm just going to select those and we're going to change that layer onto my section thick layer, which is going to be my thickest line type within this drawing. Let's say again, by other uh, layer. And you can see there that's red now, so that's changed and we'll just lock that layer. Um, then we've got the building division as well. Now, I don't want this to be the same as my building outline because it's a slightly different line type. So we're going to set this to my section mid line here. Like so by layer as well. So you can see there we've got our outline and our kind of divisions within the building. The next ones of these we want are our kind of general lines which will be our kind of streets and any sort of road surfaces we have there and we also might have this kind of public limit or road line and then the step line as well which might be any steps in the area. Um, you'll notice sometimes with these that because they're set up as like a larger dash line you get big gaps in the line which is a bit frustrating and you're just going to have to go back and sort of connect those up later on but these are the sort of main ones you want and what we'll do with these is I'm going to put these on an elevation layer and let's just put this on elevation mid for now so properties because they're not being cut, they're not a main line, but we want these to be visible by elevation in our file. So, and just make sure with those, the line type as well is by layer two. So they're now on their own line type. You can see we've also got a hatch there. And I wonder if that's come in from, oh no, that's my background, so that's fine. So, those are the kind of main lines I want to get. You'll notice that there are lots of other different layers that I haven't opened up yet. And by all means, go through these, see if they're useful to your particular project you're using. Some of these might be kind of text of different street names and stuff, which is useful to have. Others might be spot heights, different boundaries you might get as well. For the time being, I'm just gonna use these baselines because I don't wanna get it caught up with lots of different line types in this project. But by all means, go through these and check if they're important to your file. I'd actually keep these layers in my Rhino file, maybe put them in a sub layer as well if you might need to use them later. Now, the next part of this is we're just gonna set up a basic sheet just so we can have our site plan set up on a plan sheet to a certain scale. Um, I have previously gone through this in the 2D plan drawing video, but just to quickly recap, to set up a new layer sheet, we're just gonna click on the plus sign here a new layout, Rhino PDF, A3, make it a landscape, we'll call it site plan, and then within that we're going to select our frame here, go to properties and we're going to set the, the, the scale value of this frame at the moment. Now this is also a good way to check the scale of your imported data in to see if you've kind of brought it in at the right size too. So let's go back to our top view and we're just gonna take a measurement from the road and see how wide it is. So here we go. So it's coming up as seven millimeters on this scale, which is telling me that this is definitely not imported correctly. 
and by the looks of it it's imported it into millimeters but it's actually at a meter scale so this is actually trying to say it's seven meters across this particular road I know is a double lane road so it would be about seven meters um, so it's obviously a thousand times too small so because of that because I know that now we can now scale this up um, obviously when you're scaling something up make sure that you turn on everything in your file if you want to use these other layers again just so we make sure we scale everything uniformly otherwise you might end up with kind of half your model being at the right scale and half of it not so let's just turn all these on there we go and we're just going to select the model make sure it's all unlocked as well and we're just going to scale it by a thousand just using the scale 3d tool picking a point doesn't really matter where it's probably good to pick the center and then typing in 1000 there we go and if you click on the zoom selected tool it will just zoom you out to see that as well and we can check the scale of that too should be about six seven thousand yeah six thousand 800 millimeters which is about six meters which is right now so that's now scaled correctly sometimes it usually comes in in multiples of thousand difference and it just depends on the scale of the imported data in relation to the scale of your file you've set up so I've set this file up in millimeters but my site data is set in meters so it came in a thousand times too small so it's always important to check that when you set up your scaling so let's turn all these layers back off so we can't see them. Go back to my 2D line work. And we'll go back to our site plan. You'll see now it's going to be way too big. And we can go to properties and let's try 1 to 1000 and see what that sets up. That's, there we go. So that's 1 millimeter one millimeter on page. It's 1000 millimeters in the model, aka a 1 to 1000 view. Um, and we can just use the pan tool inside here to set an area of my view there so I think this is going to be let's say this is the area that I want to look at for this particular site plan um, as well as this we can set up as I was saying before the line weights and hatch styles and I'm not going to go into great detail on this in this video because I've previously shown it but if we can make sure that our kind of print color our line types are all set up correctly so when we go to print the drawing the line works set up correctly as well so let me just show you what that would look like with the line weights on so i've just set up my drawing so we've got this basic light blue hatch for the buildings and then a kind of black line for the building outline and a gray line for the roads now you'll notice here that i've set a print width but at the moment it's not showing up on my drawing and this is kind of one of the problems sometimes with using data from Digimaps and one of the issues you can come up with. The reason for this is, as we said before, if I go back to my top view and I just select these objects in my section thick layer, if we go to properties, you'll see that these are all by layer but the print width is set to default for these lines so by what that means is it's going to reset the print width to these lines to the default line width whatever width we set it to so we need to make sure that that's actually set to by layer and that way it will correspond to any layer changes we do so if we go back to our site plan now you'll see that that's got a figure line depending on my print width set here and it's really important you check that because that can cause a lot of problems moving forward as well and that will probably be the same with all my other lines so I just need to make sure that we go in to each of these so let's try the elevation ones select objects properties and make sure they're by layer in the print width as well and the same with the section mid That way we won't have any problems when it comes to setting line weights. So you see here I've set out my line weights for each of these. So we've got a thicker line for the building. I might actually turn that down slightly. Let's put that at 0 0.5, 0.3. Just because of the scale of this drawing, it looks quite thick at 0.7. Maybe 0.6 might be fine. And our thinner lines. And you'll see that because we've got a slight overlapping of information here, especially with the lines that go below my objects there. There might be a little bit of tidy up work you need to do in making sure those lines don't overlap. We can always bring our hatch forward 
in our plan so it sort of eclipses that so if we select all the objects on our hatch file and type in bring to front there it will then overlap on the lines which will mean in our site plan it will eclipse them there which is quite useful if you want to quickly hide them in that way but if there was sort of bits you wanted to show below the plan you might need to go back and tidy up those lines yourself as well um, so that's the sort of basics of setting up these this OF information we so we can start to then use it within diagrams in the next video I'll be looking at how to take this base plan we've set up and start to work into it so we can work up more of a diagram from this drawing because this is really just the sort of base layer for any extra information we want to add in as I said these maps come with lots of different bits of information and this is really only the kind of starting point of this sort of setting up this drawing so I'd really recommend working into these drawing on any extra information you might need and adding kind of annotations and notes onto it as well to actually turn it into a proper CAD drawing from there but this is the kind of base point which you can then jump off from so thank you for watching